need an intro, don't I? Hmm. Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is really good. Okay, I think. Can you end up hey guys, it's Jess, and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be showing you the Suba pad, which I have been testing for about a week and a half, two weeks now. Um, I wanted to make sure I put it properly to the test before I did any sort of review so I could see and collect my thoughts and decide what I think about it. So the Suba pad is similar to a half pad, however it is the only pad you're going to need under your saddle. The idea is it is filled with cork and the base of it imprints into your horse's back and it helps fill in the gaps like your horse might be lacking in muscle help make your saddle fit better so it's a very cool design and I've done a little like get ready ride with me um, so you can see how it's working and yeah we'll go from there I'll run you through sort of like little bits of information about it the clip is rolling I'll probably appear in like a little box at the top here because I'm that good at editing so let's get into it so we are starting off by derugging Rita because you don't want to ride with your rug on because your saddle wouldn't fit on it. It's just not sensible. So she is wearing her pink rug from Swish Horse Rugs, which I will leave linked below. And um, that's so YouTuber of me. I love it. It's like literally the best rug ever. And I started off by grooming her because she'd obviously been rolling around in the field last night. It suddenly got a bit muddy again. And then I dropped my brush. So we pan to a new clip. Uh, so I start off with the super pad so I'm like flattening it out, it's a bit like plumping a pillow, you just want to make sure all the cork's sitting nice and flat inside the pad so when you put the saddle on it's all going to sit on an even surface. So there is a little white dashed line down the middle of the pad so you know where the middle is compared to how you need to line it up to your saddle. So at the beginning there you'll see that the saddle sits quite high up on the pad if that makes sense. That is because the cork needs to settle into their back and into the areas that need it. So when you first ride in it you might find that you'll feel like you're sitting a little bit high up but just give it like 10 minutes on the first ride and it will start to settle down really quickly. Um, mine settles down in like under 5 minutes now because it's the corks are a bit more like spongy. That's so not the word but you know you get what I mean. Um, so I've just tied up the drawstrings on the D-rings there, which I just do like I tie up a lead rope, that's the word. I gave my chestnut mare a cuddle because she was feeling extra cuddly today, which is nice because not many chestnut mares are like that, but you know, Rita's actually quite cuddly sometimes when she wants to be on her grounds because that's how chestnut mares roll. So I'm just picking out her feet, giving her a little once over make sure there are no stones in there we don't want any stone bruises we don't want any more lameness we're so done with lameness that was left in winter of 2019 i'm whacking on my gloves these are my favorite ones from super cross country again i will link in the down bar because i'm a youtuber now and then i whacked on my charles owen helmet they probably don't need my promotion they're big enough as it is um and then i got on my steed as you can see she is raring to go she is so excited about the prospect of exercise so we started off by doing some long and low work to get her settled. There are some llamas that have been put in the field um, just above the arena, so she was a little bit distracted when we started. So we just did lots of long and low until she was concentrating. And then I spent about 10 minutes working on her trot and what we did is extensions down the middle. So we almost rode a figure of eight. And then I collected her up from the corner um, and asked her for a steady trot and then it extended again across the diagonal. Uh, it's a good exercise for her because she likes to just sort of go at her own speed and also I think varying the trot is really good. And I'm not a dressage rider so I can't really give you more facts than that but you know it is what it is. And then we popped up into canter and we just started off by doing some normal canter work, um, canter to trot, trot to canter etc. Um, my exercise today, I really wanted to work on her flying changes. I don't do this often because she does auto changes and she finds them really, really exciting. So I tend to not do many changes, but we tried them down the long side. That was a really bad attempt and the next few are very bad attempts. Um, so I'm just trying to mix it up. Normally I'd ask for a change in the middle over the across the middle of the arena. God, I'm getting tongue tied. But I wanted to ask on the fence line because this is not something we've done before and I like to challenge her because she thinks she knows better than me, which she does for most of the time. So my first few, as I said, were really, really messy and I watched them back on my phone and I was like, you need to sit still, Jess. So we did a few more practices here. This is probably the best one that we managed today. Here we go. I'm just trying to watch undo things. 
so we managed this this was nice um ultimately i'd like to be able to do like are they called three time changes where she does three strides and then change that's a long way off at the moment but i thought this was a good start just to get her listening and then she started remembering she was like i know exactly what you want me to do now and got cocky so i changed it up and we did a bit of leg yielding again not a dressage rider i don't know um so i pushed her over to the track and then asked her for the change in the corner after riding a shallow loop um because you know you've got to keep the brains working and then she took off with me um all in fun of chestnut mares so we did a few like little random changes and that was the end of our session um yeah i probably won't do flying changes for a co another couple of weeks now because as i said she gets a bit excited and then we had a little pop over one jump at the end so you can see how the super pad works over a fence and it works perfectly finished with a bit of long and low canter I lied when I said that that was the end of my session it wasn't we did long and low canter and then this is the after session look of the pad so you can see it's actually sunk down much more into her back and I wish I could have shown you on here but you couldn't really see but when we took it off you could actually see the parts of her back where it had filled in more it was really cool you can like put your hand over it and feel it and then we took the pad off and you'll see there's absolutely no sweat where the pad was that is because cork is a really low insulating material um, so it doesn't hold heat basically and then we scraped off all the hair with the amaze brush this thing is so cool um, not sponsored my friend got it for me for Christmas because I can never get hair off my saddle pads and this thing's amazing so I forgot to mention in the bit that I've just said but I do have a discount code for you I will leave it here like the true youtuber that I am um, yeah so this code will get you 10% off I believe the pad is currently around a hundred pounds ish on the introductory offer don't quote me on that I will leave it linked Thank you for watching if you have any more video suggestions leave them below or you can dm me on instagram or comment on my instagram posts or anything i'd love to know what you guys want to see because i'm bored in quarantine as we all are i've got a few video ideas lined up so hopefully one of them will interest you and yeah thank you for watching